but we didn't want them to work. So now we're dealing with that. So how many drinks Poker, is that? You're over here. Okay. What's up? Uh, are you kidding me? I don't plan on feeling feelings about now. I gotta get through. If I can get through this panel, I'm kind of allowed to do whatever the hell I want for the rest of the night. So let me survive for 60 minutes. No. Damn it. That's asking too much. You know, if only we had a way to start the show, if only there was some kind of an audio cue, perhaps a sound. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Status the Ferret! <laughs> I'm going to cough a lot tonight. Do it. <laughs> to the Dragon Show, the show you know you'll love. We hope you stick around for the madness because we got all sorts of surprises coming your way. You'll hear of them all if you decide to stay. Welcome to the Dragon Show, we got tons of laughs to spare. We're aiming for 10,000 subs and we're almost there. Welcome to the Dragon Show, we brought that booze to share And enough fizzy cherry cola to make our problems disappear We got fizzy cherry cola, the blood ritual, dick shaped things and so much more Sit back, relax, crack open a beer, cause he's into the blue and Alkali's not here What the hell? Oh my god! Oh, hold it up! Hold it up! The Wait, there's more? Yeah! There's oh sheet god. music! That's the official sheet music for this That's song. That's fantastic, thank Holy you. Holy shit, that's actually really cool. Guys, one more time for Status the Fat! Hey, Dragon Show. Yes? I have something you need to sign. Oh no. For the charity. Is it a will? <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh. damn it! <laughs> I'll gladly sign that. That's fine. Oh, everybody. Hello, welcome to the Dragon Show. That's Dragon and Fair together. I'm Xander. This is Alkali. I'm not here! We're here for reality 2019. I need to sign this. You need to sign this. I would like to mention before we start introducing guests, uh, the Dragon Show theme song started, and while Status wasn't looking, Dragger pulled out a lighter, and your convention chairman immediately went. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your convention chairman, it is an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to introduce you to the person who's probably going to cry a lot, Poker Wall! Oh, good. We're getting the close-up for when I start tearing up. Yeah. <laughs> They're getting the... You know what? I'm not oh, going to say that. <laughs> Over at the other side of the table, you know him from the show... Actually, at this point, you know Ms. Con Chairman of First Squared. Ladies and gentlemen, he fell for it. Dragon! Share the pain. Share the pain. Share the pain. Share the pain. That's right. Share the pain. Wait, wait, Poker, is that your way of saying you're going to co-chair with me? No! <laughs> con couch. Con couch. Please. If please. they're mates, it's a con love seat. And then you have to get it scotch guarded. Next! Thank you for the few of you like, ah, jizz. <laughs> Next to Xander, we have, ladies and gentlemen, a staple of the Dragon Show. We don't say that because he's a staple. We say that because I'm fairly certain he can just turn into one of those and go through the little device that puts holes into paper. You just seem like that type of guy. I am really tired. Shut up. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Chris the Comedy Bunny! Were you expecting that one, Chris? Because usually it's a little bit more like a thing you're wearing. Yeah, no, well, used. no, it's a thing. I, I've known Alkali <laughs> long enough now to where I just know he doesn't know anything about me. So Nobody when he introduces me, it's just whatever fucking thing you can think of. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once he went to the moon and fell off of it, back from the moon, Chris the Comedy Bunny! Hey. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, he jumped right off of a screen. He was laying on it for some unknown reason. Chris the Comedy Bunny! Ladies and gentlemen, the physical embodiment of cocaine, Chris the Comedy Bunny! Hey, 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 stop projecting. 
right now. Jesus I Christ. am so tired. <laughs> it is Friday. Was, uh, was, this panel doesn't have a weight. I have a cocaine story. Oh boy. What? Cocaine story. Hold on, real quick. Really oh, yeah. quick. And oh, ladies and gentlemen, the creator of the Dragon Show, let's give it up for Xander the Boy. Yeah. Yeah. So his story, go. Joker. Okay, so this is the first time I tried to do cocaine. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. Loud enough to so get back to the room. That's the uh, best my way voice start. is gone. Oh, right. Wait, 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 wait. I forgot. Yeah. Can, can, can you rephrase that one more time? The first time you tried. Keyword, that's part of the story. Uh, I tried to do cocaine once because a friend of mine gave me cocaine. He's like, I got some cocaine. And I was like, well, you know what? I hear it's great. Uh, and so he gave me like a little like dollar bill wrapped up in cocaine. He's like, do it when you want. And I'm like, thanks, dude. That's really nice of you. So like it was a day I was hanging out and I was like, okay, so now I'm going to do cocaine. <laughs> this is the best I, dinner on. commercial ever. I love ever. that he sold you it on his convenience. Like, do it when you want. Yeah, do it whenever you want. <laughs> That's and a really convenient drug. Yeah. And so I, 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 you know, I get my cocaine, I get my cocaine dollar out, and I open it up, and I make a little line like you're supposed to, and then I cut a straw in half like you're supposed to, and then I'm like, you snort it, right? Okay. So then I do that, and when I do that, I jab my nose with the straw. <laughs> Which then causes me to bleed a lot from my nose. <laughs> and then I blow air. Which means I sneeze blood and blow the cocaine into the air. <laughs> and there's just blood all over this dollar bill. And I'm just like, oh, damn it. <laughs> well, that didn't work out at all. <laughs> you, you come back to the guy, I messed up. I got the nosebleed first. <laughs> I did. I was like, it's supposed to give you a nosebleed, but I don't think it works that way. Excuse me, Xander, we call that rusty pipes. Oh, rusty pipes. Oh. I just like the idea because I know you well enough to know that you didn't just sneeze. You didn't just, you also went, phew, big puff of smoke. Ta -da! <laughs> and that's how Chris did cocaine. It, I didn't even get to. That was the worst part. I tried to. I tried really hard and got a bloody nose. That's all that cocaine beat me up. Like it took my lunch money. That's all it did. That's all see, it but did. honestly, I see that being your problem with any drugs. Like the first time I did weed, I went to put it in my mouth and punched myself in the face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Then I went to pick up the joint I dropped, set my dress on fire. It's like, your dress? That's a different story. So there I was doing heroin. Dude, my mom was so against me doing heroin. I've never <laughs> done that. That's a good thing! Hi! New rule! You have a great mom! I do. It doesn't take a lot. It's like, hey, try to do well in life and don't do heroin. Better than most parents. <laughs> the thing is, my parents were never like, don't do drugs. They were like, this drug sucks. This drug is okay. This drug is dumb. When my mom was doing it, when my mom was like, I was like, how's heroin? And she's like, it's not great. <laughs> <laughs> See, now that, once again, is a better dare commercial than we had. I love that. Heroin. It's not great. The more you know. <laughs> and she was like, she was like, don't ever do PCP. It's like breathing through a plastic bag. And I was like, okay. That sounds like shit. I don't want to do PCP now. <laughs> Your mom's gonna be like, all right, you can do whatever drug you, drug you want, just sit down, we're gonna watch train spotting for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, then you got your training schedule. Yep. You're good. My, if you fuck up, they give you a viewing of uh, the Darren Aronofsky movie that I just fucked up. Uh, uh, you oh, forgot the title. Requiem for, 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 for a Dream. That, that, movie, uh, that movie is so much more. Okay, train spotting and Requiem for a Dream are basically the same side of a coin, but one is like. The fun version. Yeah, it's yeah. just the fun version. It it's is. Like, which is, it's not even fun, but it's way more fun than Requiem for a Dream. It is. It is way more fun. It's, it is more fun. Also, by the way, Boozy let me know to say this. The Dragon Show does not want you all to die of a drug overdose. Apparently that is something we legally need to say at this point. We do not want that. Please don't die of a drug overdose. All other deaths are fine. Do not die of a drug overdose. We really care about you. Not this weekend. Not, <laughs> not this weekend. So, Please. Maybe later. Maybe thank you. Thank you. Maybe oh. at first square. No! 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 Hold on. Yes. Not my problem. Oh, wait, no, I can do the insurance. No! <laughs> Damn it! These clauses are getting intense, man. It's, no, it's November. <laughs> it's November. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's November 1st. It's no longer spooky to be found as a dead body at the con. You're like, woo, what's in these? I think it's still spooky. It's dead. It's, dead. it's, all it's still dead. spooky. It's just... Woo. Capital crime! No, oh. is, is there anyone who's really, really, really into Halloween, like they need the timing? Is there someone who comes across a body and goes, oh, week too late? Yeah. <laughs> what is this shit? That's some, that's some stupid procedural cop drama bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> like, should have died a month, should have died a week earlier. Hard cut to the stupid name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So anyway, this is the drag show. <laughs> Who is new to this? Oh boy. Okay. Oh, 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 oh we are so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we are so sorry. So usually we she start with the con. She doesn't know about it. That was great. Yeah, They're all go. the same thing. Talk about Chris's drug habit. It <laughs> Somebody not, dies. It's a failure. It is a drug failure. Not okay. A habit. I'm sorry. I know the definition of the word habit. If you fuck up every drug, that's still a habit. <laughs> it's just better than doing every drug. My mom made me promise not to do, not to smoke weed until I was 18. And on my 18th birthday, she lit up, she lit up a joint while I was eating like breakfast, and she goes, "Oh shit, you're 18. Here." <laughs> I need to know something. It's oppressive if I don't do this. <laughs> Can we get your mom to come to a con? Yeah, sure. Why not? Is she be like a guest of honor? <laughs> <laughs> guest of honor. We're just gonna call her Drug Mom. Oh my God, the shirt. Yeah. Yeah, I got her the Weed Mom shirt. You got the Weed yeah. Mom. Shirt. Weed Mom. Weed Mom. Oh my God. I love the Weed Mom. Shirt. Chris got me a Weed Mom sweatshirt because I thought it was the greatest thing to have. <laughs> <laughs> so I am officially Weed Mom now for the, for the Dragon Show. I'm sorry. That should be the official shirt of the Dragon Show. Weed. Mom. We have an official shirt. Just, but does it smoke weed? Does it Come on, where the fuck are you going? I have dairy. Where the hell are you two going? If you have a panel, you are allowed to leave. I'm going back to dealers. Ah, shit. Okay, that actually makes sense. We're, we're all like, aww. You're damn right you will. Wait, do you, want to actually, do you want to have a shirt that smokes weed? You need to pump in the, like, the chest here as it gets... Oh, actually, smart 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 yeah. Yeah, this is sure. the furry fandom. The furry fandom is good at two things. Fucking everything up, and everyone here is an engineer. Can you guys make us a smoking shirt that actually smokes? Oh, oh not at the convention. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good d, &D item. This is a tomorrow problem. We're not going to figure out right now. So, <laughs> tomorrow a good d, d item in this one, and Dragger, correct me if I'm wrong, would be the ever-smoking bottle. Oh, oh, get crunk. Oh, Three. us in middle school had so many wrong interpretations of that. <laughs> if you don't know what the ever smoking bottle is, it looks like an urn. It's in D&D &D, uh, 3.0, 3.5, and 3.55. Uh, this is an item that once you open it, it can fill a normal size room, 10 by 10 by 10, with smoke in one round. That gives you an idea of how much smokes. Well, if you're very good at the game, you learn how to infuse things. And all my players are drug addicts, so um, we came up with the hot boxing of invincibility. Allow me to explain, allow me to explain why it's invincibility. Because if you're that high, you don't care. <laughs> Everyone rolled once, best game ever. <laughs> I don't know if it's better or worse. We weren't so much uh, drug users for it, but because it was an urn and we had a barbarian that was obsessed with the blank of his enemies. Oh no. Every enemy that was slain was put onto a pyre, and the ashes were poured into the urn. And when we met a relative of said enemy, the urn was opened, so the person could breathe the ashes. <laughs> nice. And this is what we did in middle school. That's awesome. Xander, uh, yes. you look like you're trying to say something. I am. We have questions. Should we go through questions? Or? We, okay. We, we can do a few. Okay. I'm going to start here. Erner. Hi, hey, Erner. It's hey. Halloween time! Yay! Tell us a spooky campfire story. So one time... <laughs> no, it's a day late. Fuck that. Sorry, Erner. No. <laughs> you missed, though. It's not your... He, he submitted it in time. Let's tell a spooky story. Um, alright, so I think one of my... One day Halloween was late, so not the end. Yes. <laughs> I, I think my favorite Halloween story might have been, uh, recently, uh, this is the second year in Chicago we have been snowed out of Halloween. Last year, the same thing happened. We had a sleet storm, basically. The day of Halloween, and very few people were out. But we had an idea. We thought, you know what would be great? Why don't we make 
a nice big crock pot of warm, hard cider for the parents who brave the outdoors and take their kids trick-or-treating. And we gave one set of parents, explaining what it was. And as they were walking away, we watched them give it to their child. Oh, no. We watched from the window as they handed a nine, ten-year-old this thing, and I watched them. <laughs> he learned something that day. <laughs> Bad ferret. <laughs> I gave it to the parents. Parents are dangerous. Jesus Christ. We were look, we were wondering where you were, and like, oh, he's hobnobbing. We're like, oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. And we started going on about hobnobbing. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We we're just like, yeah, I'd hob a knob or two. Would you have a knob? Yeah, I'd have a knob. I'd have a couple knobs. And then what was it? Oh yeah, I, was, I just go. I was like, call me Bilbo because I'm about to hob it. <laughs> I was hobbing all the knobs. I'm what the shit, Chris? <laughs> I'll hob the fuck out of a knob. Dude, I'd hob a knob any day of the week, bro. It sounds so dirty. It does. Well, what the fuck does hobbing well, knobs mean? That's how you end up doing drugs, apparently. Yeah, you, yeah you hob a knob and then you go. <laughs> If you hob a knob too much, you become a hobgoblin. Whoa. And then you run into a friend, like, dude, you can do this at any time. Any like, oh! Look how convenient it is! <laughs> it's any time cocaine! Any time <laughs> I just love that idea of the selling point. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> any time cocaine, brought to you by the 70s. <laughs> I need to do my Patreon questions! Alright, Tyro. Hi, Tyro. What is your favorite holiday, for what reason? Or what is the reason for your least favorite holiday? Okay. I still gotta go. I love Halloween to death, but I gotta go with 4th of July. I get to blow up so much shit. <laughs> and then in Evergreen Park, they just have sweet street sweepers that kind of go up on the grass. They're like, we know that we're not supposed to be doing this, but there are bottle rocket sticks everywhere. Screw you guys. And then small fires start popping up. I love our neighborhood. <laughs> uh, I both love and hate Christmas because, like, it's enforced. As in, like, it's in every store, you must hear Mariah oh, yeah. Carey. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh. yeah, but it's also, like, everyone has to be happy because it's, like, cold outside. So yeah, everyone's yeah. like, oh, fuck! Let's oh, yeah. celebrate! <laughs> it's so fucking cold! No, that's kind of the idea. Is that really the only reason why eggnog is a thing? That's the socially acceptable way to be drunk throughout the dreary winter Christmas music season? I love yeah. it. Yeah. Dude, I love... Okay, my favorite Christmas song is hands down, um... I'll be home for Christmas, because the song isn't even, like, convincing. It's not, like, an upbeat song. It's not convincing you that he will. He's like, if I make it. <laughs> it it's so sad. He's like, I'll be there, like, hopefully. Wait, is this, like, a Civil War note in yeah, song Yeah, yeah, he's like, I will die. He's like, I might die, but, like, if, I, you know what, worst case scenario, I'll be there in my dreams. <laughs> I hate Thanksgiving. It's like, hey, let's get <laughs> You pass the earth. Why do you hate Thanksgiving? Hold on, hold on. You Tell hate us. Thanksgiving. Give me I hate Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Why, do Thanksgiving? Why do you hate Thanksgiving? Because every year I have to go back home to my parents, sit around the big table with the rest of my family. All right, son, here's the turkey. By the way, Grandma passed away yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> or, by the way, your grandpa had, had uh, butt cancer. I'm probably not going to have butt cancer. You might one day have butt cancer. Growing out there. Here's some meat that increases your likelihood of butt cancer. <laughs> <laughs> Say he's, put it in the hole, but not that one. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Meanwhile, he's over there with teenagers' first chemistry crit kits just extracting the, I was about to say THC, that's wrong, no. the tryptophan, that's what's in a turkey, oh. unless I make it. Alkali, Stuffing is delicious. <laughs> the turkey makes you tired for different reasons. <laughs> I would do that. I will never forget Maybe. the Maybe first we'll Thanksgiving that I spent with him. Because I made dinner. We do not celebrate Thanksgiving because I ate traditions like that. We celebrated Friendsgiving, which is something that we came up with that we make the rules for, and it changes every fucking year. But our first Thanksgiving, I put a bird into the oven. I took out the bird, and I started taking out the stuffing. And he looked at it and goes, what's that? I said, White Castle stuffing, and he almost broke up with me. <laughs> Then he tried White Castle stuffing, and now he's been with me for ten years. Aww. Aww. Thank you. He's in it for the stuffing. We were just. He is very in it for the stuffing. Thank you, Sue. Ladies and gentlemen, Sue, dear. Preferably not at the table.
table. <laughs> I'm sorry. When was that a rule that we established? Oh, family dinner's getting weird. <laughs> I'm about to stuff the turkey. Come oh. over, come over here, turkey. Oh, no. <laughs> and then just like a little cobble cobble. And just like Dad's about to cut the turkey. Oh. All he's stuffing this turkey. Oh, I'm sorry. What the sh I anyway, know. Are they gonna anyway. bore them afterwards? Just a little. Okay. No. You know what I do like about Friendsgiving? The reason it's better than Thanksgiving. You get to you get to ignore <laughs> that oh, nice man. family those 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 family members that have that casual finger food racism. Oh god. <laughs> yeah, casual finger food racism. Has anyone experienced this? Oh yeah. yes. Yeah, it's we're all so like, like God, uh, it's all like, uh, do you want dark meat or white meat? He's like, I don't like dark meat. And you're like, you know why, grandpa? <laughs> <laughs> At least once at Thanksgiving or Christmas, someone in the extended family that I don't see often is going to drop a line like, Well, you know, that's how they are. Yeah. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> Casual finger There's food a... racism. And I do love that being part of this community, I've stopped putting up with that kind of shit from my family. So we do Friendsgiving because we're really not allowed at family Thanksgiving <laughs> because we corrected them. Yes. <laughs> Right? So then it's like, tacos? Who brought tacos? Casual fan for yeah. racist. <laughs> Was it your girlfriend? <laughs> Shut no. up! Oh. Oh. Yeah. Okay, last one on the holiday thing. I always liked Halloween, but who here remembers that distinct difference of Halloween and Halloween how furries do it? Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, so I was into funny. Halloween as, as a kid and in college. I did this stupid stuff. I'm that idiot that went as a weighted companion cube but forgot to put in armholes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a land party Halloween event, so I had to have people help thread in the keyboard and mouse into the cube oh, that's while so I squatted cooler, over the chair. It's so much cooler, though. <laughs> I'm making a note here. Huge success. <laughs> the first and only time Drago forgot about the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go through more video questions. All right, Eggman. Hi, Bla Eggman. Bla this is kind of a holiday, so it's related. Black Friday is coming up, so how about some Black Friday shopping stories? There's the worst holiday ever, huh? Oh. Hey, there you go. You have to work on Black Fridays. Oh, yes, I do have to work on Black Fridays, which is nice because then I get to avoid all that nonsense. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you my co-worker's story. Nice. My co-worker has a young child. Last year, he wanted to get him. Uh, it's a, I, I don't know what to call him, but there was a small system that emulated Nintendo games. No, like no, made, oh, is that what it is? A little NES, NES. mini thing. No, no, it NES. was an NES, oh, yeah, but it had the games built in. Yeah, yeah. And... He sat outside. We, we got off work at 1 in the morning. He drove his car and sat outside at Toys R Us. Since 1 in the morning, waiting for them to open at 5. And while he was sitting there, he realized no one was outside, so he sat in his car. Now, he was keeping an eye out until a gentleman cut the line. Now, Tom figured that if somebody pulled up, he would see it. He would get out of his car and take the place at the front of the line. This guy drove his car to where the line should be and thought, this is fine, and parked his car on the sidewalk in front of the Toys R Us, declaring that that was, in fact, the front of the line. Well, Tom realized that he's doing it, so he moved his car behind that guy's. And all I know is that Tom said, so the manager showed up at about 4 in the morning, and there were 18 running cars lined up on the <laughs> sidewalk in front of a Toys R Us. And all the guy could think is, if they're going to drive through my store, this will be the greatest video for Black Friday. <laughs> this is the demolition derby of families. Like, what? Barbie's on sale? Vroom! Jeff, what was that? Speed up? No, Joffrey Giraffe. Oh. oh no, it's Joffrey. He's evil. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else Black Friday story? Oh, uh, I got a PS3 and I stayed all night for one. That was kind of cool and kind of sad at the same time. It was like, why are we here? Oh, solidarity. Yeah, we're all together. We're going to buy a thing and sell it on eBay. That was pretty much it. I did do that. Yeah. yeah right? I did that for Skylanders, man. Yeah, yeah. Skylanders? Skylanders, yeah. 
Because I was like, oh man, I can pay my rent. Everyone's super excited. <laughs> because what happened with Skylanders was uh, there were rare Skylanders, and they put um, a filament on the front of the rare Skylander pogs or whatever the fuck they were. So you could feel the empty, they were supposed to be blind bags, but you could feel the bag and know which ones were rare. <laughs> And so me and my buddy went out during Black Friday and bought the entire stock of them, and then I paid my rent for the next three months off of rare Skyland figures. That's amazing. Holy oh. crap. I also love the concept that you and your roommate are just feeling up little bags. Oh, yeah. Like, this like, is the rare one. This, it was. And there were people like, I want that. No, you don't. I'm bigger than right. you. <laughs> So, okay, just in case anyone ever wonders your if there was a... Pays your rent. <laughs> Damn. Whoa. What? Children don't understand! If anyone ever wonders if there's a silver lining to Ugly Spyro, it's Chris being able to pay his rent, because that was the result of what Skylanders was. They redesigned Spyro, and looked like he got hit in the face with a frying pan. It did. <laughs> and then he brought him back! I mean, the Skylanders cartoon isn't that bad. Yeah, but he... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then they, then they fix Spyro and they're like, okay, here's all those Dragon Daddies. Yeah, oh yeah, like, holy, holy shit. Oh, that yeah. game remake, so good. Oh yeah, man. Right? Nothing but Dragon Daddies. They knew what they were doing. They knew. They, they knew, knew what they, they knew. Were doing. Are we right? all in agreement at this point that a lot of things are catering to furries? Yeah. Have we noticed that that's right. definitely on an uptick? Like you're turning on TV, it's like, oh. I need to go to my room for the next 10 minutes. Click. Can we talk about the exercise dad in the Nintendo game? Oh. I didn't know about this. There's a dragon in a singlet? The Ring Fit Adventure game? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know about this. Both I've dragon been, daddy? Yeah. I've been working on The Walking Dead like for a month or whatever the fuck, so I haven't seen this thing. I bought the game and I played it for one day. Oh. I couldn't walk the next day. Oh. What did you do? He was dominated was by the dragon dad. I got dominated by the fucking Dragon. You know that's not how you're supposed to use those controllers, right? Uh, you do what Dragon Dad well, tells you to do. Well, it was a giant do. ring, and... <laughs> Never mind, that is totally how you use those controllers. Stretch out of Dragon Daddy. It just stretched me out. And... Yeah. <laughs> Dragon Welcome Daddy. to the Dragon Show, a horrible bunch of peeps. <laughs> if you meet us in real life, we're not this much of creeps. <laughs> I want Dragon Daddy to be more forceful, like, down on my frickin' app. So I can wake you up and you can work out with me. <laughs> no, the, the entire time I was just like, get on the floor, get back up. <laughs> now I kind of want to take Xander's example and actually make a company. It's like, hi, here at BDSM apps, we give you BDSM apps. Download it, bitch! Download it! Download it, bitch! Just you know two hour commercial. For? You figure it out. It's perfect for dumb way. It's like Subway, but it's Dom's, right? So it's like, download the fucking app. Like, normally at Subway, you get whatever sandwich we have. Here at Domway, we you get the sandwich you will, we, take, we give you when you fucking like it. <laughs> and they're always a foot long. Ah! Oh, we decide to meet. And you have to eat the whole thing all at once. There's no putting that bitch in the refrigerator. Oh. <laughs> That's right, shove it in your mouth. Oh. <laughs> Cookies or chips? It's good for you. Cookies or chips? Just kidding, you don't get a fucking choice. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You earn a choice. Would you like the small, medium, or large? <laughs> it's the large. It's always the large. Hey Xander, large. what's on your lock screen? <laughs> Lots of things. Sky Draco, hi, Sky Draco. Let's do hi, another Sky. question so we can stop talking about Domelay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> You guys get the chance to make a fast food place like McDonald's. Wait, what the fuck? Ah! Domeway! <laughs> Domeway! Eat fetish! <laughs> I... And what would it be? Or like, what food would you serve? Jesus Christ! It's Domeway! It is Domeway! Dom Dom that question! Oh, fuck. Domeway. Domeway. That was like okay, some... Okay, wait, wait. Oh here's, my god! Here's the question. No. At Domeway, okay. would they still force the vegans to eat the meat? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, no, if they leave, they're cool. Like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Dude, as well, long as bring out the soy sausage, wham! Dude, as long as you understand the rules of Domway, you're fine. Your safe word is on the receipt. Safe word's on the door. Safe word's on the door when you walk in. It's like right there, man. I it. like that being the tagline Domway. Safe word's on the door. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Safe word's on the door, bitch. 
We are not allowed to be entrepreneurs anymore. Holy shit. Next goddamn question. Here, down way, you get a leather harness when you walk in. All right. <laughs> no, no, that's only for rewards oh. members. Rewards <laughs> members, yeah. I'm you punch like a hole? I'm a you get a new piercing? <laughs> I hate piercing. you all! I'm envisioning the full on. Oh. I'm envisioning oh, the. Oh, we got a Frenchman! That's your punch card! Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> alright, alright. You have a bunch of nipple piercings, so once you get 10, you get a free sign. Oh, yes. oh my god. Real question! Shelly! Hi, Shelly! How you ask about fucking sandwiches, Shelly? How spoopy is too spoopy for you? Well, Domway is doing pretty good. <laughs> it's a scary goddamn store. Oh, okay, now listen. There is a specific distinction between something being spoopy and something being scary. It's important. That's why spooky. I like that's why I like the word spooky, because it's just scary enough to startle you, but not scary enough to bother you. <coughs> oh, oh, so anything that would be in a uh, Scooby-Doo cartoon. Yeah, those are spooky. spooky. Yeah. Those are spooky things, but you're like, that guy murdered that guy. That's fucking scary. I don't like that. You wouldn't if be you're like calling that spooky though. Yeah, that's it's weird. <laughs> But you're like, whoa, like if you jump a little bit and you're like, whoa, shit, okay. <laughs> that was spooky. That was spooky. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if like just once Scooby-Doo went too far? Like, this is no longer spooky. <laughs> this is fucked up. <laughs> like, so I scoob, I didn't sign up for this shit. Yeah. <laughs> Rock <Rumble>, Raggy. Right. <laughs> 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 Actually, to be honest with you, I'm pretty sure that did happen, and now we have Scrappy Doo. So let's change topic. <laughs> we went to Donway. We didn't read the, the sign that, the, that had the safe word on the door. Oh, Zoinks. We missed our clue. <laughs> no, that was last week's. This week's is Jinkies. Yeah. <laughs> it changes every week. Yeah, man. Dragon Show, ruining childhoods. <laughs> All right. Skyler. Hey, Skyler. I have a confirmed bachelor looking for to learn to cook simple things. What beginner recipes fit? Hold on. For one, you would recommend. You don't come to us for simple recipes. Have you seen Alkali cook? <laughs> Holy yes. shit. Right. So here's the whole concept for my cooking show. All it is is combine somebody with a general knowledge of how to cook a lot of different things with a college student, and that is how I make everything. <laughs> So, because butter is not that expensive, and it goes in everything if you're fat. <laughs> Speaking of confirmed bachelor, I genuinely had, and some of my uh, elder relatives, they genuinely thought confirmed bachelor just meant single. That's adorable! <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Who out there thought confirmed bachelor just meant single? Because confirmed bachelor is not a common term, dude. I mean, in the 80s, yeah. Wait, don't it, you mean that? Confirmed bachelor is a very polite way to say that the person is interested in their own gender. Yeah. Oh. That is what they used to use in the olden days on the news because they didn't know what word to use yet. Paul Lind was a confirmed bachelor. Yes. Vincent correct. Price was a confirmed bachelor. Rock Hudson. And that bothered a lot of people, like, wait. He's like one of us. No, seriously, everybody. Yeah. Like, he looks like a straight guy. <laughs> no, seriously, was a thing in the '80s. I shit you not. Oh yeah. yeah. No, I love '80s gay because it was so delightfully loud. Oh, it was and, and like Dude. straight people were still like, I don't know, man, maybe not. Oh, yeah. Like you have a band called Queen, and you're like, it's not gay, and you're like, I don't know, dude. It's, it's turbo gay. <laughs> it's like turbo gay, right? Right. right. Or like your grandma's like, Liberace's not gay. And you're like, all right, grandma. <laughs> It's so it's it's delightful and like the just the raw amount of like I don't believe it. <laughs> the dude has his own photo filter. Yeah, like Paul Lynn's <laughs> whole joke setup was just like, hey, what, hey, what are you gonna do with that dick? I don't know, suck it, and that was like a joke. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you put the laugh at the end, yeah. it's playful. But but he but he was actually just a bachelor, ready for like the ladies loved Paul Lynn. <laughs> Oh my god. I always mixed up him and Rip Taylor. Really? Yeah, I love did. Rip Taylor. Paul Lind is my hero. Oh, okay. I love him. Wasn't he Center Square? He was always yeah, Center Oh, he was Square. a master at the Center Square. Oh, man. We oh. have, like, alienated so many people in the audience right now. Like, oh. you old shitheads. I, I, I asked how long it was going to go. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, no, no. I, I, have, I have an idea for it if you don't. All, All right. right. Well, I was going to say, Paul Lind was in that same era of sinister gay that uh, Vincent Van Gogh was, or Vincent Price was. Vincent, Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh is the character from Scooby-Doo. 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, right? That was the first one. 
Ghost Ninja Ninja. Yeah, thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo, which they captured exactly thirteen. It was cool. Uh, <laughs> like, as, okay, as a line producer, where they're like, they're, when they're pri- when they're pitching thirteen Ghosts of Scooby Doo, they're I want to be the line producer. Like, oh come on, can they have more than thirteen? That won't get us to syndication. <laughs> Oh my god, man. Can, dude, do you got like a, do you got like the back half Scooby Doo? Oh man. Is there, there extra ghosts that we can catch? That's so funny. Uh, yeah, it was, it yeah, was, it was Red Shirt Shaggy. Yeah. Yeah. They oh, also yeah. had, uh, they also had a little Indian boy named Flim Flam. Flim Flam! I forgot yeah. that's Flim Flam! Oh. Yeah, man. What's wrong with you? Alright, so real quick, how, how you update Hollywood Squares for today. You bring it back. But all the guests where they are on the tic tac toe board is where they are on the political spectrum. So it gets really oh, weird. Whoa. Speaking yeah. of politics, I've got a gift for you. Oh dear. Ooh. Is it fizzy cherry cola? I wish. It's Stalinade, the real red soda. <laughs> Chernobyl brewed, secret KGB flavor. Who? It's secret? That'd be great if it's like it just says on the front. Wait, wait, wait. It says say like zero calories. That's all I've got to say. It's on the bag. It just says say like zero calories. Brings rainbows to your life. Is totally fine. Will not cause any cancer. I would like to point out it is committing to the classic bit. What flavor is it? Red. <laughs> oh look, it says right here. Guaranteed to have the trains run on time. That's nice. <laughs> I love this. Going on to more questions. <laughs> Dr. Larks. Hi, Dr. Larks. What's the most work you've ever put into a costume? Oh, Jesus. The most. Um, wasn't my weighted companion cube. <laughs> <laughs> no work, not forethought. <laughs> the most work we have ever put into a costume was at Nero for the end of what we call the Creeper, a.k.a. the uh, uh, oh, Old Hadron storyline. It was a real-world 15-year storyline. It took 15 years from beginning to end. And on the final encounter, we went into Old Adrian, and the, uh, I was about to call him the convention chair, I'm so sorry. The person who ran Nero had been working on this for a month. He converted a tractor and trailer into a giant beetle. Oh! Now in the day, it looked like a tractor and a trailer with a bunch of shit stuck to it. Oh, man. But in the middle of the night, standing out in a field with 125 people, thinking there's a car coming at you until you realize that the front headlights have pupils? It was the most terrifying goddamn thing I have ever encountered, and I wish... I wish that's where I could end the story. If you don't know what Nero is, Nero is a live-action role-playing game. It's D&D in real life. I was the, uh, basically leading the town at this time. It's one of my last events I got to play as this character. And we attacked the creeper. Many of us died, but finally we got it to stop. We made it immobile. We cut off all of its legs, but we couldn't get through the carapace. How do we get in to attack the bug's heart? So my buddy John started attacking its ass. <laughs> there were two shields on the back side of this thing, and for the first time, as he hit them, we heard those magical words, got it. It's taking damage. So we went balls deep on that ass! <laughs> we were pounding it and pounding it and pounding it! And finally, Steve calls, halt. That means stop the game and gives the description. The backside of this giant bug bursts open, entrails flying out all over the battlefield. He had taken garbage bags, big old 120 gallon hefty garbage bags. He cut the side of the garbage bag that was sealed and connected them all, and he rolled it out onto the field. They were filled with Vaseline, and I had to climb up this creature's distended small intestines through plastic bags, through what I thought was pudding, but was just Vaseline, crawling up into the creature to attack the heart. That's Everyone was in on it except for me! <laughs> <laughs> that is some socialist boner shit right there. <laughs> I have to admit it was a good time. Yeah, Gentlemen, man. Pick your poison. Oh, uh, carcinogens. <laughs> you can't Not, pick the one. You got yours. Uh, I mean, I guess you I... guys don't get to know what yours is. Okay. Have fun. Uh, is there jalapeno or anything that's going to harm me in this no. bottle? Fine. <laughs> 
Bottle. There's right. something uh, I have to ask I'm now. Okay. You can trade amongst yourselves. You are the con chairman. You do not have to drink if you okay. don't want to. Uh, let's see. Oh, by the way, the most costume I did was uh, Bionic Commando. I was one year, so. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Describe a little bit of the effort that went into that. I dyed my hair and... I put a big box on my arm, and I didn't work out much that year, so I was fat by on a commando. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Most work I ever put into a costume was I put bull horns on, and I hollowed out a monitor, and I was a monitor. Oh, my <laughs> God. Oh. That's brilliant. That is goddamn brilliant. Dragor? Uh, so, my... The one I put the most effort into, there was this uh, mask that you could like do the paint kit yourself. So it was this like Terminator skull thing, and I like evil robots. So I painted the whole thing up, my parents helped me get into it, had all this whole production. And what we didn't know was to affix the mask, it actually had to use latex around the edge to get it around you. And what we didn't know was there were some slits you were supposed to add to help with breathability. So here I am as an eight-year-old going out doing the Halloween thing, and I basically just, I'm walking, I'm kind of going, I don't know what's happening, and I fall over. <laughs> my parents think I'm playing around and my friends just keep going ahead, and I'm just laying there. What no one sees is that I have accumulated so much sweat and heat, I got heat exhausted, fell over, and all the sweat was pouring out of the eye holes. So when they went to pick oh me up, God. it was just pouring out like my eyes oh. liquefied. Oh, he's crying. Oh, no, he's crying. No, it was like thick and viscous. They thought my eyes melted. Oh. 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 His eyes are melted. Spooky. You may do your reviews. You lost in on us. That's you what you get. Oh, yeah. What, what I, is your best cap? Just rip off the just rip off the tip wall. Okay. Are these screw cap or the pop top? Yeah, pop top. Honestly, the yeah. best is maple. It's bacon soda with maple syrup. Okay. Nice. okay. I'm gonna That's guess good. mine is PB and J. Mine is like a cinnamony kind of thing. Wait, hold on. No, mine's cinnamony mm. for sure. Oh, mine, mine bubble is gum. not label. Bubble gum, I think. It feels like you know you're not supposed to swallow the gum. It's like that, except you drink it. Oh, I'm jealous. <laughs> is it just me, or does this smell like Red Windex? No, oh, oh, mine is just chocolate. Like Red Did anyone else get that when they grow up? Like, if you swallow gum, you won't poop it out for five years. Yeah. 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 Well, yes, my parents so also lied like to me. I got, got pumpkin pie soda. You but got pumpkin pie? I like pumpkin pie. In yeah. reality, you can actually pay us, uh, you can actually, uh, not pay us, but give to charity, and we will drink Mystery sodas. Oh, I brought this by me. <laughs> nice. That, 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 that is not a thing unless the people on stage agree to it. We're making that very clear right now. Yes. Uh, Did you have any uh, Halloween costume? The only or, one or, that the only one I can remember that was any good was I was like uh, when I was a kid in elementary school I was like a giant Zapdos. Oh, it's, a nice. it's like a po electric uh, bird Pokemon. It's a Pokemon yes. dad. Yes. Yellow bird. <laughs> Pokemon, uh, I'm gonna give you a weird bonus one just because this is one of my all-time favorites. Once again, going back to the Nero world, the, my costumes were all Nero for the longest time. Uh, we were finishing up my storyline. I ran the game for a few years, and one year they gave me total free reign. And we came up with a monster called Doris. Doris was a dying creature. This creature was basically alive for so long that his immune system had finally started to fail due to extreme old age. And that is how we pictured this guy. What Jen did to me... What, what the fuck is on your bottle? Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Oh, oh yeah! A lot of bubble gum. Isn't that good? Oh, oh I get it now. Yeah. Awesome. I got Where old white Why does Nick come with pie? big gargoyle sunglasses? <laughs> old so white man? Oh. People. Lester Fixins. Yeah, old oh. white man pumpkin pie. Oh. <laughs> Lester Fixins. Y'all get your fixins. Please tell me They're really pushing the fixins angle. I don't think they knew how to market pumpkin pie soda. They're like, I don't know, fixins? That's old timey and white. <laughs> Poker, is Piglet on yours? No, I got Ooh. Lester Fixins as well with the bacon maple syrup. See? Fucking just weird white Lester, shit. Lester Fixins looks like the non happy version of the Six Flags old man. Oh. Basically. <laughs> All does. I know is mine is wearing a top hat. I'm happy. Nailed it. <laughs> All right. Well,. I sat in a chair for three hours while Jen, our professional makeup artist, applied the makeup. They had seen this character three times throughout the year, but every time, as a Shadow Lord, all I had to do was put in one of those see-through hoods. If you've ever done Halloween, you know what I'm talking about. Well, Jen took three hours on me, and on this side of my face, 
she decided that it would be old age rot. And she applied seven layers of liquid latex, skin tone, and then use a razor bait to cut through it and add aging. And it was beautiful. She bald capped me, did it to half my head too. The other side of my face she took a little bit more time with because that was the gangrene side. And it was absolutely well done. She covered up my eye, but the thing that she warned me about is, okay, there's a super thin layer over here, so you need to be very careful. And over here she put a boil about this big and a tube that was under the makeup, down my shirt, down back to a... I can only describe it as one of those things that you might use as a butt plug if you're really adventurous. <laughs> that I had to hold in my hand the entire time this encounter is happening and they finally get to Doris. They get to the boss of bosses. This is it. This is the final moment. And the first person to walk in is Karen. Karen, the Celestial Guild Mistress. And she runs in and she says something ultra heroic. Ready to fight the creature that has been causing so much pain. And I turned around with full makeup and got this close to her and simply said, Do you really think you can defeat me? And squeezed too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and the green pus that was inside this burst open and splashed right in her face. <laughs> and she went, and every, the game stopped, and she, I'm like, I'm so sorry. She goes, no, that was amazing, but I just peed. <laughs> Please tell me that was canon. That was, whoa, we totally, I was like, no, no, okay, go clean up, but when you come back, just, you know, in-game, you pissed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you went too far, you went past spooky, you I see? went past yeah, spooky, yeah, you're right. That was, yeah. that, was, that was more than I spooky. I really like that you were like, all right, what's the biggest bad guy? Aging. Aging. <laughs> like, oh. The, the reality, like, you're like, we're playing fantasy and make believe in the woods, but also, like, you eventually died at time. Like, <laughs> like you your imagination be, couldn't even beat time. You can be as immortal as you want, and part of that immortal immortality doesn't include some kind of preserving process. It's gonna suck. It will, man. Dude, I did this game for 15 years. After a while, you gotta get creative with the villains. <laughs> What's happening over there? Uh, goblins attacking a farm. What's happening over there? Worm farm. <laughs> Worm farm? Yep. Why did the goblins stop attacking? I think they're having an existential crisis. <laughs> we had that! His name was Surga! He hated children, so he sent them to attack the town knowing they would die. The PCs had to solve this problem. <laughs> so there were child goblins protecting daddy who's been murdering them for 12 generations. Dude, PCs had no idea what to do. That sounds like a good business model. You can always make more kids. You can, right? especially if you're goblins. What's the pro? Okay. Oh I did exactly. Who here ever played uh, Black and White? Oh, you're hell playing yeah. the oh, god. Oh, yeah. If yeah. you go, if you commit to hardcore evil, the best way to get your power for your creature to cast spells is through human sacrifice, especially <laughs> child sacrifice. <laughs> Unfortunately, the game wasn't well balanced. So if you went against someone who was playing as a good deity. All you had to do was just up reproduction to the mask and just start dropping kids in the crucible <laughs> and you just set fire to the whole town. The game was totally broken and it was awesome. Your hand went evil and bloody with like the dagger claws for fingernails. Uh, Look up this game, it's horrible. <laughs> Black and white. They made a sequel, I don't know if it was any good. And that's the one where you get the macro animals as well. Ah, God damn it, Fox! Oh my god. Alright, guys. I had a friend who had the cow. Explain. The cow kept pooping in the village. Explains so he kept, a lot of things. He kept disciplining the cow, and the cow didn't understand. Okay, just don't poop in the village. And the cow just decided, I'm just not gonna poop. No one, okay, to clarify, <laughs> no, so your, vi your village, <laughs> like, your, your, your creature that's your avatar in the world is like three plus stories tall. So when it's pooping in the village, the game has physics. So I watched a turd either break a house or kill a family. Okay, guys. Uh, we're, we are running out of time. I gotta do quick plugs here. Uh, tomorrow in here? For Mystery Science I believe theater? so. Almost. Yeah, uh, Saturday yes. yes. no, yeah. no, no, no. to midnight. Ten to midnight. Ten to midnight. It's right here. It's right here. We will be oh showing our version of Night of Living Dead with our own edits and commentary, it and we'll have people up here 
yelling at the screen as usual, so it's gonna be a lot of freaking fun. If you have you guys... ever been to MST3K when we run it, this is very different. If you don't know what we did, ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman over here and the entire Dragon crew, but mainly him, has edited an entire feature-length film, the original Night of the Living Dead. We have put... Stuff in it. This is... <laughs> two, this, there's, there's it's about 200 effects. hours worth of work that he has spearheaded, and I think that you have created something absolutely magical. If you have the time, if you are able, please join us so that we can see something that, because of all of you, because of your unbelievable charity with our Patreon, because of you showing up to our panels, we were able to accomplish something that is rare. Effort. We were able to put effort into a project, so to all of you, thank you for getting us to the point where we can do that. Like, seriously, guys, thank you. Well. That's a lot of work for that, dude. It's a long movie. It's a super yeah. long movie. Dude, you're like, I thought of a joke. Oh, I gotta find the thing. Fuck, I can't find the thing. Let's hunt down the thing. Don't get me wrong. Oh no, I... the thing's in the wrong format. Dragor, can you convert this? <laughs> I used to edit Fuck this thing. Let's I used to edit on. high school football games. I get it, man. Yeah, They're yeah. They're fucking annoying. All right. Any other yeah, announcements? We're good. All right. In that case, before we go, uh, we're gonna actually turn over the stage. It's gonna get torn down because. Uh, we have Uncle Kage in here next, if I remember correctly. Guys, in about five minutes on this stage, we're going to be having... I was about to call you Old Man War Stories, because I... <laughs> <laughs> I... No, 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 no. I'm sorry. What did you call me earlier? I can call him Old Man. <laughs> I like old man war stories. Oh. That's, that's a cute <laughs> little guy. <laughs> Comes that's down here. Your... Old man <laughs> war stories. He's like a weird Santa person, but he just suffers from fucking PTSD. <laughs> It's Dude, what comes after the he would be the best food races. No, Kage would be the best for nuclear fallout because he survived the all nuclear bombs, right? He's a cockroach, yeah. yeah he's totally sure. a nuclear. Yeah. Yeah. See, that's why me and him are going to do really well. He's a cockroach, and I've eaten enough Twinkies that I should be immune to it. <laughs> so, guys, as this stage is being reset, I'm going to get off of it and turn it over to him. However, we do owe you a charity story. It's a very short one today. This is how this works. If you can give, give, and if you can't, there's multiple opportunities throughout the con, and we are furries. We will take care of it. So, before we do the short convention uh, war story, I can't get convention horror stories out of my head. I Real quick, uh, we're on dragonshow.com and YouTube, dragonshow, blah, blah, blah. Just Google us. You had your plug window. I know, sure. You had your Going window. over here, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Dragon! I don't know what that was. I'm going to just stand in front and tell you the story because it just came up, and that would be how oh, Twinkies. Oh, Twinkies. I used to love them. When I was growing up, Twinkies were one of my all time favorite foods. And then I had an incident. It's known as the Depression Twinkie incident. Now, who here gets sad? All of us? Awesome! If you ever want to compound that, start a convention. <laughs> well, I started first squared with a bunch of my friends. Two months out from the con, you start to realize how insanely difficult it is to run a convention. And it's about that same time that you start to feel a little bit inadequate. You start to feel like you're doing something wrong and the convention won't be as good because of you. Or at least that's how I felt! And I turned around in my office and saw all the gear for First Squared. A wall of bins. A fort of fructose. We called it Fort Fructose because instead of doing the smart thing and purchasing the soda when we arrived at the convention, I purchased it two months ahead of time because there was a sale. Was it a big sale? No. 50 cents off a case? Hire a Jew. <laughs> On top of Fort Fructose was all of the party favors that we were going to be giving out at First Square. And our first year was the end is just the beginning. 
We put it at the same time as the Mayan calendar ending. It was originally supposed to be a one-time convention, and then we were stupid and kept doing it. So everything we bought was for the end of the world. So we had sodas, we had rubber cockroaches, and of course, we had Twinkies. Does anyone else here eat their feelings? Yes. The first Twinkie was just there because I was sad. The second Twinkie was because I realized I was hungry. The third Twinkie was because I was stoned. The fourth Twinkie was because I forgot about the first three. The fifth Twinkie was a mistake. The tenth Twinkie is when Xander walked in. He saw an empty Twinkie box, exactly nine wrappers, and me sitting there with a Twinkie on my finger. <laughs> and he looked at me and said, what's wrong? And I couldn't help it. And I said, full tum, and I ate the rest of the Twinkies. <laughs> so I'm here to remind you of two things. One. If you do get sad, remember, you're a part of the furry fandom. Talk to one of your friends. It's way better than eating a box of Twinkies. And two, you know how they say Twinkies will last forever? I shat out half a Twinkie a day later. Thank you guys very much. Silver Gato Man, he bought me a coffee. Silver Gato Man, here is the song for thee. He likes to video all the panels at the cons. You should go and watch them whether they are short or long. Silver Gato Man, you video that's not a jibe. All of you go to his YouTube channel and like and subscribe.